Welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, everybody. So this is another day, and it is time to make a mineral feeder, okay? You'll notice from previous episodes, we had gotten minerals when we blew our trailer tire, and it just took off like a rocket away, and we just messed everything up. So anyway, we have minerals that we have to provide to the animals. They've been probably three weeks, Brent's, without some minerals. Um, so we're going to get it to them today so they can start taking it. So if you're not familiar, animals require mineral supplementation, okay? Back in the glory days when the animals roamed, like these buffalo, roamed the entire plains, there's different minerals found in, in the soils, in the plants, in the rocks, at different places. So as they traveled, they could get their minerals from different areas. Well, now that we contain them into a single pasture, there's not always the same minerals that they need. And so they can get deficient in minerals and deficiencies in minerals can cause problems for health, uh, birthing, um, pregnancies, uh, just a, a whole host of issues can happen if they don't have the right mineral supplementation, okay? So today we are going to come up with a mineral feeder, which you'd think would seem super simple and it is, um, for the buffalo. can be delivered in different ways. Um, minerals can be delivered as a block where they just take it all and into a solid block. You put it out in the pasture in like a bowl or some sort of container and it kind of can sit out there in the open or, or not and they come up and it's like a salt lick kind of a thing. They just go ahead and lick it. They get their minerals. It's free choice um, and, and they just take whatever they want whenever they want. Okay. Another way that they do it is through granular methods and that's the type that we got um, back in that other episode is a granular form. So these are 50 pound bags. These are mixed minerals. These do happen to be for bison, but they don't have to be. Um, each area kind of has its typical minerals that they have and also their lackings. You can get some that are tailored to the animal or you can get some general just from the area that you're at. A lot of different pricing, so just kind of pick what you want. There are a few simple rules to to go by when doing a mineral feeder, okay? Now this is very much the first overarching rule is do whatever works, okay? And it's, and it's never always the same solution. Any rancher who's been doing this kind of realizes that you make up your solutions to whatever problems you have in the way that you want to do it, okay? One frustrating thing being a beginning rancher and being new to this whole thing is you kind of want to know, well, what's the right way to do something? And honestly, there isn't always a right way to do it. There is a wrong way, it's the way that doesn't work, um, but then you fix it, okay? So here's some overarching principles to go by when you're doing a mineral feeder, okay? First is, you wanna keep it dry. If, the, if it gets wet, um, it's not good, um, it starts dissolving everything, it just, it kinda ruins it. So the main objective is to keep it dry. The second, is to make sure that whatever you're putting it in container wise that it's actually stable okay that it's not going to tip over animals especially the bison but any animal is going to play with stuff okay so those are the two things you're going to want to make sure it's stable so it doesn't tip and you want to make sure it stays dry now there are tons of different ways as i said to do this you can have sleds you can have big roofs you could have concrete troughs um, I, I believe steve has his in a concrete trough and he doesn't have a roof over it, but he just, he lays out the minerals, but you try and plan it out based on when the rain's gonna come and you just fill it up when needed and so forth. So this is a simple way that I saw online that people had, and I had all the ingredients for, and it provided relatively good shelter. You have a blue barrel, okay? It needs to be blue or black. The white ones don't seem to work very well from what I've been told. But a blue barrel to hold the minerals and it's going to sit inside of a tractor trailer tire. Now, to get the right diameter, you need a 24 and a half inch diameter tire. Um, yeah, it's a 24 and a half inch tire and this is going to sit right in the middle. Okay, the tire is going to act as the st stabilizer and the barrel will be cut open on a face. The minerals go inside and it stays dry. Make sure you have one with a solid top so it's not the removable lid, and bada boom, you're done, okay? 
Um, you can transport it um, in different ways. You can put it on pallets. The people have anchored this to, to skids. They've put this on all sorts of things. So today, my task is to get this guy ready in here, stable, and put out in the pasture so that way the animals have some minerals. Okay, so we want to orient and plan on our blue barrel here. Okay. When you have your barrel, at the very top is the fully enclosed barrel, okay? And you have these two white screwed lids openings, okay? They have on this barrel a lip that's right here, and there is actually water holes, weep holes, that when it fills up, it drains out the side. And they are aligned, usually here, with these white guys. So they're gonna be over here. So when you're marking out where you put your actual hole for all the minerals, you don't want to put it next here or over here. You want to put it perpendicular or 90 degrees offset from these guys. So that way when it weeps, it doesn't weep out and go right into the opening from where you put the minerals. Now it's time to put the hole where the bison are going to be putting their head through or any of the livestock, okay? Um, because you don't want water running into it, the hole, the bottom of the hole, has to be above the bottom or the top of the tire. So we want to go up, make a mark, so we leave a little bit of a lip here, so that way water doesn't run in. I'm just going to pick an arbitrary amount. And typically they go up 18 inches from that mark. And it's going to be a circle of 18 inches. And if you mark the middle nine, you get your string and then you mark all the way around it. All right. So this is my crude representation. I'm about 19 inches big and about the same wide, but it's good enough. So now we got to cut it out and that's what I'm using the Sawzall for. So I'm going to have to get the drill out, put a couple of holes to give me a pilot um, and use just a, a multi cutting tool blade type and then do my best to go around this and hopefully not cut myself. Now I'm going to do my best to keep it on that line. No promises. This is just a short sawzall tip. General purpose. Wow, that was actually really simple. <laughs> right? It's no blue on me. So we've taken a knife and actually cleaned up the edge. That was really just really simple to actually cut. I thought it would be a little bit worse, but it just navigated that thing like crazy. It was good. So it, it didn't follow the line perfectly, but I think it looks smoking great. So we have all these shavings. Um, just need to pick those up a little bit, kind of dry it out. So have like maybe a cloth ready that you can do that. And we are gonna drill four holes, um, half inch holes because we have half inch bolts and they're gonna go up from the bottom a set amount of distance. Oh, crap, and I can't get it out. <laughs> nice. The bolts are gonna extend through and inside the tire so they need to be below the lip at the bottom. So that's going to dictate how high it is. So it looks like seven and a half is right just below this lip. So I'm going to go down seven inches or come up seven inches and drill the holes. And because they extend in when they try and tip it, it shouldn't allow them to actually tip it out. So that's the game plan. 
I'm using the seam as a guide to make sure I get all four points. All right, time to drill. These are the bolts, as I said, they're half inch carriage bolts. Um, I've got a washer on one end and I'm gonna put a washer on the other end and they're gonna sandwich just right up against the inside poking outward. Um, now, my wife asked this question, I'm sure a lot of you might have the same thought. How do you put all four of these in and still get it inside if the goal is that it can't get it out? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two of them in and I'm gonna put two of them in that are hard to reach. So the back one and one of the other side ones because I can put, after we get it in with those two, it'll slide. I'll then reach through the hole and put the other two in. Make sure you put the washer in the correct way. I don't know if there is a correct way or not. I was like, washer the correct <laughs> way? I don't even understand. Now these are only six inch long. Seven inch? I don't know. You could get 12 inch, eight inch long bolts. Um, it, there's only so much gap between the tread and the hole opening. So um, these are six inch or seven. I can't remember. All right, I'm going to get a bolt. Do you need some help with that? All right. One. All right. Okay. Now we have an alien barrel. Let's see if this works. This is what a bison's gonna look like when he goes in there, because I can't see the hole. Yeah, it's Jeff demonstrating how to be in the little mineral feeder. Son of a... <laughs> this one might be a little high. All right. You want to thread the other one too while you're down here? <laughs> <laughs> so, did you finally figure out the thing that is, I thought you figured out? This is the oops, right? I was yes. wrong before. This is what I've been waiting for, this oops. Put these on first. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, how are you ever going to get those things on? Ah, suck obus. All right. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, you son of a monkey. So what we need to do is pull this out and before you push it all the way in put the washer and thread the nut in this gap here and then keep threading it as you push it all the way in there we go I would say don't drop your nut. I think it's pretty obvious. Look like a snap. Okay, so don't go for the eight <laughs> inch long ones. Knowing this, I would definitely not try and exceed and push that too much. All right. That was the worst part. Yeah, it looks good. You did a nice job. All right, we've got our little lip here. We've got a hole. I'm gonna clean out some of the extra shavings. Okay. I'd say we're ready to try this out. Yeah, it's a, well, you've tried it out enough. I think it's ready for the bison to try out. You don't want me to act like a tatanka? Well, you were in there. I mean, you, you were pretending for us. I didn't have my horns. Oh, you should. Oh, I don't know. You can lift it. Our 
are bison gonna ruin that? No, I think it'll swivel some. So it'll swivel, so I don't think that they'll. That's true. They're not gonna have an easy time if they do it. I mean, gosh, you know, they're huge. So, but I think it looks great. Put this flat somewhere. Don't put a tip, okay? If it tips back, great, but it'll spin. So potentially they could knock it around and twist it that then the opening is on the downhill side. So if you can, put it somewhere flat, relatively speaking, to avoid the chance that it's all gonna pile forward. Um, you don't wanna get everything wet. So the prevailing wind and rains come from these directions, the west, southwest, northwest. So I'm gonna try and orient, I want it oriented eastward, um, which will be that direction. Um, second thing is you don't have to have two people. When it's completely empty, you can just roll it. Um, some people say roll it pasture to pasture. I'm not gonna roll this thing 400 yards. So <laughs> get somebody to help you and stick it in the back of a truck or lift it up with the forks of a tractor, okay? It's like, Anyway, but it's empty right now, and we only went 10 feet. I don't know how fast they're gonna go through this and consume it. I only brought with me down here right now 100 pounds, but I, this might be able to hold 150. I, I don't know. So I'm gonna come back next week and then top it off with some extra bags, but I wanna see first how much they eat. Considering they haven't had any in a while, they might eat a lot. In case you're wondering, this is what it looks like, just a granular. It has a lot of salt in it and that's what attracts them to it, but it has other things. Other things like copper and iodine, iron, manganese, selenium, zinc, all that kind of stuff. So, yes, you do not want to put this right next to the water, all right? Also, where you put it, don't put it on your prized piece of land. Um, Undoubtedly, you're gonna have some spills or something and it's not super great for soil. So put it in the worst spot for soil. Again, this is movable, move it wherever you want. We're done, we got it all finished. Didn't take too much time. Um, I would say the two hardest parts, getting a tire and the second part that was tough was getting those last two bolts in just because you had to thread it so much. But um, otherwise, it's very simple. We're gonna see how this goes next week. Um, I think it looks good. Make sure everything's tight. We're, we've done as much of it as you really can besides putting it over a complete shelter. But um, your animals are gonna need minerals. So find out one way that works for you. Um, like I said earlier, there's vastly different ways you could do this. Just remember, keep it dry, keep it stable so it doesn't tip and um, keep it portable, hopefully, you know, unless you have one every spot you go to. So anyway, appreciate it. Keep staying along with us. Um, like and subscribe, please. That's the way to best help out the channel. Um, that way we can keep putting more content like this. Hope it was interesting for you. Um, even a newbie like me can put it together. So those are the simple projects. Those are the great projects. So anyway, catch you next time. With you, I wanna stay with you.